Hello and welcome back to FT.com. Well, the big news today has been the long-awaited employment data for the US for August, almost universally viewed through the lens of what it means for the Federal Reserve and its forthcoming decision on rates, but also revealing some fascinating insights on the changing nature of the US employment market. With me now to discuss this is our Chief Economics Commentator, Martin Wolf. Martin, thanks for joining me once more. It's a pleasure. Now, Let's start by taking a look. We've got a chart here to show you the, uh, the US employment ratio, the total proportion of the population that's in work. And despite the headline figures about the increase in the payrolls, we can see that on this measure, we're still back where we were somewhere in the late 70s, early 80s. What's going on? Well, basically what's going on is that the number of people in work is rising with the population. It's not really been doing better than that. They've had a very good jobs performance. Hmm. And the losses... I mean, the, the, the huge shock that occurred in the crisis has never been made up. So the decline is, very, is really large, uh, several percentage points of, uh, of uh, the total population that is no longer in work. And there's really no sign of this recovering. And it, one of the really big questions is, can this ever reverse? Or does this mean that a very significant proportion of Americans are effectively no long, not only no longer in work, but actually, and this is also shown in the participation rate, the number of people, they're not even looking for work. They've just disappeared from the labor market altogether. And that, of course, is a huge problem in terms of social welfare, but it also makes it difficult to interpret the unemployment numbers because it then makes you have to ask yourself, well, if the labor market is really strong, wouldn't some of these people come back into the labor market? And in which case we'll find there's more slack right. than the unemployment numbers suggest. Okay, all of which suggests getting back into the, uh, the, uh, the Fed dialogue that perhaps these numbers are more dovish than they appear, that they're consistent with more slack in the economy than we might think. Can we talk briefly a little bit more about the participation rate, which we can again show a graph for? Obviously, it rises very significantly as women enter the workforce uh, back in the 60s and 70s. And 80s, actually. Yes, and, but there's no great sign of women deciding they're not going to look for work anymore. How can we explain this equally clear-cut decline in the, in the participation rate in the, la in the last few years? It seems, as I understand it, to be predominantly men, relatively unskilled men, who've lost their jobs, um, their employment opportunities have gone, and they've found it's impossible to get jobs, and they've given up. They've just disappeared from the lab labor force uh, altogether. Uh, and this looks increasingly, because it's so long term, uh, again as a structural shift. It's in fact one of the elements in what we see in the employment ratio. So the, the, the ability, we've always used to think of the American labor market as the great jobs machine, um, but actually this hasn't been true now for quite a long time. And since the crisis, it's never really fully recovered its earlier capacity to generate employment for all the people who you would normally think right. will be looking for work. It certainly helps to explain the kind of anger we're seeing reflected in the popularity of Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders on different wings of the... Uh, Absolutely. Election. It's one of the elements, I'm sure. Now, let's get on to the Federal Reserve. They've said they wanted to see some improvement in the labor market uh, before raising rates, which they've obviously prepared everybody for later on this month. Yep. They've had some improvements. How would you gauge this very difficult decision for them at this point? Do you think, first of all, do you think they will raise rates? I think, the, if I were honest, I don't know. Uh, I you, thought you should be honest. I, 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 you're not I don't know. Predicting what a small number of people mm. will do on an even a tightly balanced mm. thing uh, is difficult. But it seems to me that everything that has happened in the last few weeks, including actually this jobs right. report, uh, but obviously including the market chaos and so forth, would suggest that it is quite sensible to postpone the decision. Everything has shifted them in a more dovish direction. Since I suspect they were quite divided already, I would be modestly surprised if they raise rates. And by the way, I don't think they should, but that's another right. matter. And I suppose one final point, if they were to raise rates, one popular suggestion among the, the markets types rather than the real economists you talk to, uh, one popular suggestion is they might raise rates and then couple that with extremely dovish forward guidance. Does that make any sense to you? I can't see the point of that. Uh, I mean, let's Either not, do it or don't. Let's, let's not be right. clever. Right? The Fed doesn't reverse its position very often. Uh, it's, it, it started cutting rates a long time ago, 
uh, I don't think it's it's raised rates for about nine years. I haven't uh, tested it. Maybe, maybe it's eight. But anyway, for a very long time. And normally when the Fed raises rates or cuts them, it mm. means it's part of a sequence. So by raising rates, the Fed seems to me it will be signaling not just that ri- rise, which is worth what yeah. who cares about 10 basis, 25 basis points, that it is intending to tighten. And the indication that it is intending to tighten, it seems to me, must indicate that it really is quite optimistic about the economy and that that's an appropriate path. And playing games of the kind you described seems to me very completely pointless. Right. I can't see why the Fed would want to indicate now that it's clear that it's intending to make a series, a cumulative series of tightening moves because I just don't think anything in the inflation data, in the growth of the economy or in the labour market compels that decision. Okay, Martin. Thank you very much indeed. Martin can judge the Fed as well as any of us, which is to say, as he honestly said, not necessarily very well, but I'm inclined to agree with him. I do think there is a chance that the Fed raises rates. I do think on balance the odds at this moment are that we do not see a rate rise later this month.